This is our fourth and final week of Easter sewing. Let's get her done this week together. I know you guys are excited to see these dresses. I am so excited to finish them. Let's go. All right, so I have joined this skirt together. I've got the overlay right here and you can see how pretty this pink is showing through. So what I did with the pink skirt is just, obviously it's like a, I just like a blah, blah, blah. It's just a lining. <laughs> it's just a lining because you know, this is very much opaque and it's just like this pretty blush pink that's popping through and it's the same that's on the bodice. So that's kind of neat, right? And then what I'm going to do, because I've got the two layers, it allows me, at this point, I've got my pink that's just a two inch little hem there. And I just machine top stitched that in place. And then I've got this beautiful hem of the white. So both of, so all my hems are done. Then what I did is I pleated the, the white, I just like, what do you call it? Knife pleats? And then I just gathered up um, two full, you know, selvage edge to selvage edge. I ripped that twice and joined them together, French seams. And I've got two, two of those in here. So that's like, what, 120 inches of uh, this lovely Swiss Batiste. It's just so fun. I wanna make a dress for myself out of this stuff. So now, um, because I've got two layers, and I've got, you know, a fully lined bodice. I'm gonna have a fully lined shebang, right? I'm gonna put the white to the outside of the bodice and then the lining to the lining of the bodice and it'll all just come right together. So here we are sewing the skirt of the bodice of Audrey's Easter dress. So far, things have gone fairly well with all of this Easter sewing, which is making me a little bit nervous, like things are going too well and I'm cautious about what is around the corner. But for now, we have ourselves an almost complete Easter dress, folks. All right, so that is the skirt come together. It's coming together. That's the dress. That's really the whole dress. It just came together. It's the end of the day now, and I am going to go shower and wash my face and sit up in bed and edit week three's video. So that should be out in a couple days. And then you'll be seeing this in week four, even though I'm technically still in week three. Nobody, it, it's okay, nobody cares. So, isn't that fun though? Oh, I love it when it comes together. I think we might add like a sash right here, a bow, whatever, um, the tie, you know, whatever. I don't know, maybe it's sash, maybe a bow. Things to think about, but I think it needs something something a little bit around the waist to transition it nicely, but the lighting is really terrible right now. Um, it's really pretty. All right. I am starting my day with working on Sweet Everly's smock dress. Remember that number? I pleated it way back when and then put it aside to get all the hand embroidery work done on the other garments. And although this may look like a complicated dress, it's going to come together in a hurry, I think. So I transferred the curves of her dress onto my favorite freezer paper product. And I am really excited about putting this dress together because I am trying out a new approach to the construction. Lizzie, are you naked? All right. Don't mind my lack of eyebrows. I did a face mask today. It's Saturday. I'm just feeling it, right? Okay, I'm working on Everly's uh, dress. This is my first time that I, it's not my first time doing an all um, smocked bodice, but it is my first time on having it all be as continuous as possible. If you know, if you've heard my channel, you know that I like to eliminate seams whenever possible. So, instead of having a back placket, like I've seen so, like I, I haven't seen anything other than a back placket, which I'm not talking bad about it, I just haven't seen anything else. Am I the first one to do this? Highly like, un unlikely. Um, but I just haven't seen it before, so I'm not really sure how the cookie's gonna crumble, but I'm gonna try to get her there. And instead of a back placket, I'm gonna try to have the dress come together at the side seam. I think that'll be a more of a fluid look than, um, and then I have all the smocking on the front as well as the back continuous. Very excited about. 
Like most other smart garments, I need to prepare my pleated fabric for the blocking process. So I'm pulling out those pleated threads until I get some seam allowance, tying them off in groups of twos or threes, and then starting to pin my pleated fabric to this blocking board. And then I'm adjusting the gathers to get an idea of the smocking ratio that I like, just eyeballing it until I get to something that's, you know, to my liking. And now we can start to pin down those bodice pieces. These pieces are the curves of the dress transferred to the freezer paper. I'm making sure the shoulder points are at the same pleating lines and then I cross over those arm eyes together. And at this point, I'm moving right along and getting really excited about everything because, you know, what could go wrong? Why is it sticking? I have never had freezer paper not stick before, ever. I am not sure what happened either, which is really the problem area, right? You want to know what's going wrong so you can solve the issue. I still have no idea. This is some bulk freezer paper, so I'm not sure if it's not sticking because it's just been in my collection for too long, or maybe it's bulk, or, or maybe it's the fabric. I haven't tried to iron it onto organdy before. I just don't know. But I am going to try to continue on, so at this point I put a bunch of pins in and well, I search for my sew line glue pin but that is nowhere to be found. So I pin her up and I hope for the best. Honestly, this went so much better than I thought. I really think I lucked out here, but I will take it. So now that we have that hurdle averted, I pull away the freezer paper and I am tickled pink about the lovely pleats and how it all came together. Alright, so at this point I have finished the French seam on the one side, the one seam that is connecting this entire dress. Isn't that just... Right? So exciting! It is one seam to connect the entire side, so all the front is continuous, all of that smocking is going to be continuous, and all of the back is continuous, and all of that smocking all the way around, and like... Oh, it's all going to be continuous. So, that's exciting. Um, and I only did the smocking on the on the, like the top part, like the yoke area, so it doesn't actually extend down to the bodice. But, and I did that just because I'm making this for my youngest, who is uh, nine, ten months old. You know, a baby. Um, but if this was for an older child, I would definitely take this. You know, you'd have the opportunity at least to take this. In my mind, it's sewing. You do you. But. Um, I didn't take this any further, what I'm trying to say is I didn't take the smocking down any further like under the arm area because I'm making this for a baby. But like I said, it's so I need you, if you want to do it for a baby, go for it. Um, it would be continuous if you did, that's what I'm trying to get at. It would be continuous down here underneath this arm, which is so neat. So 
at this point, I am left with a couple of questions. I've got this side seam, which I still need, I need to iron, but the one side seam. Um, the questions I've got are, uh, so I've got the shoulder seams to do and how to do those. Do I just put them together and sew? Do I put some entredeau in there and, and join them that way? Um, and then, then I've got the neckline and the underarm areas. So the arms on this, I'm putting in these little like flutter sleeve type number, this little thing, this thing is lovely, right? Because of that and because of the bulkiness of the pleats, I am leaning towards assembling this with some entredeau. I think it will be just gorgeous. It'll carry this whole heirloom loveliness that we've got going on. It's like a little cloud right here, right? It's like its own little parachute as it's on its way down. <laughs> Can we do that again? Can we like slow-mo like... <gasps> to get out more. Um, so I'm leaning towards doing the entredeau just to carry the whole style together and um, then it would also be a very clean transition to doing the sleeves. So I think I just taught myself into doing that. All right, bring on the entredeau. Just so we're clear, I am making this up as I go along. I just want to like put that disclaimer out there. I am very much making this up as I go along. Okay, thanks. So there are many different ways a dress this style can be assembled. And while I love doing the construction, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time before the smocking, in this case, here is a downside. And I do discuss this further in my video where I just talk about how I like to construct before smocking and what that process looks like. But yeah, it's not a huge deal though. You can easily pick up those drop pleats as you are smocking or you can just replete those handful of pleats and then smock her up. Or you can do the other route because of course it is sewing, you do you. And this morning is turning a new page for me folks. I can't tell you how many times I've had hand embroidery on the back of a garment and then erased her since I didn't want to stretch myself too thin. But now those days seem to be behind me and I am so thankful for it. Between all the kiddos getting older and now Henry and Daisy being in preschool, I'm doing this hand embroidery design instead of just erasing it away and I am loving it and all that it represents. So this is becoming a familiar scene on my channel. Early mornings, blacked out windows, coffee or tea in hand, and trying to get some sewn in before I head off to the office with this little girl. I'm reviewing my notes on Daisy skirts because, well, let's get real. By this time, I had no idea what I had planned. Too much time had passed. So once I figured out what I had thought about way back when, I started preparing all of the pieces. And now we are on a roll, folks. Joining all the pieces of the skirt, gathering up that dotted 
twist section. Seriously, it is just delicious. I want a dress for myself made out of this delightful fabric one day. Still plenty of plain on the floor for me now, but one day I am going to get there when I am not covered in breast milk and spit up and all the rest of it. I'm going to make me a dotted Swiss dress. Anywho, the last little bit is to put this gorgeous Lily of the Valley Swiss embroidered flounce to the bottom of the skirt. And that is going to hem out the skirt as well. We are rocking and rolling between the final two dresses. Audrey's just needs the hand sewn buttonholes and hers is done. But Daisy's dress needs some sleeves and Everly still needs some work piecing together the shoulder seams and such. So I'm bouncing from here to there as it makes sense with the kiddos and still running the business and you know, life. All of that. Happy day as we have a piece together skirt. All of the embroidery work completed on the bodice. They can now join forces. I love seeing the pieces coming together and a new creation. It is just so fun and it just gets you going. As it comes together more and more, you just want to sit there and let it come together more and more, right? Just motivation on top of motivation on top of creativity and inspiration and the whole thing builds and builds. Alright, I am lining Daisy's dress with Pink Nola by Speckler Vogel, by Speckler Vogel. Some of my absolute favorite fabric. This is just one panel from Selvage Edge to Selvage Edge, and I highly debated whether to put another panel in for added volume. I mean, I do want volume, but I don't want too much, you know? So in this case, I decided to just use one panel of the fabric. And the embroidery work is done, folks. All the embroidery work, yes, front and back of the dress is done for Daisy's dress. I am thrilled about this and just what it means for the future. You know, like the baby days are kind of behind us. It's bittersweet, yes, but right now it is looking really sweet. <laughs> And then it happened. All the progress stopped. You go potty? Daisy, do you need to go potty? Yes? Okay. All right, so back from our potty break. Um, yeah, the preschoolers have been home for like two weeks now. It's been this lovely crud cycle that's been circulating in our community. They're fine, it's just like, would you like this? Um, it's just the normal stuff that preschoolers get and then they get better and then the other kids have it and those get and it's just like this amazing cycle. Um, thankfully the preschool that we that we've lucked into they follow all of the rules so the kids are not symptomatic and they keep sharing it and it's just like we all are ready for spring to be here and for all these little bugs to go back into the woodwork. So um, that being said, Easter sewing has been, Get another book. He had that book. Get another book. There's other books over there. Easter sewing has been like 90% done for two weeks now. And I am itching to get it just done. And just be done with it and move on with life, right? Um, we are, as I'm filming this, uh, about a week and a half away from Easter. You'll probably see this in like a week or so. I don't even know. Not one of my worries right now. Um, but anywho. In case you were wondering. That's why this video is taking so long to get out to y'all. I am plugging along with Daisy's dress, putting in those sleeves, and then Everly's dress smocking away. And then the older girls get hand sewn buttonholes with this delicious silk buttonhole twist while Everly's dress gets a shoulder snap. All right, at this point, Easter is almost done, but I've got two small but important pieces still to do. I've got 
uh, Everly's bonnet, which is gonna come together in a hurry. It is the simplest little bonnet to do. It's just gonna be like click, 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 done. And then I've got to do Henry. Can't forget about Sweet Henry. Um, I actually have forgotten what I ordered for him for his outfit this year, so I'm gonna go. I should go check that out first. Let's let's do that. So here's all the shoes this year. It's just like such a fun thing, right? Such a fun thing. You can see the oldest has a heel on her shoe this year. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. So we've got little Everly's and then Daisy's, Henry's, and Arthur's. There's his little button down. Isn't that gonna be so cute? Ah! Aren't those cute? So there's his little button down. And I think I'm gonna take advantage of the whole collar thing and do a little bow tie, do it out of pink. We can do the whole, you know, real men wear pink thing and he can tie in with his sisters. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do suspenders or not, or just let it let it be with a little bow tie and, and call it a day. I'm thinking just staying on the simple side of life. That's kinda who Henry is. He's just on the simple side. He wants to be comfy and uh, and all of that, and he wants to play with his cars and his dinosaurs and he could care less, but all the frilly frues, and so now that he's getting older, we're just gonna honor who he is. Bow tie. Is wide, or inches, or grab some German interface. Thanks everyone for watching. Go check out the previous videos in this series if you missed them. And I hope everybody has a wonderful time celebrating Easter.